I'm walking down the street. I do want to say to Donnie and many of you in this room that over a very long career in this city, all of you have helped me and my colleagues tell the truth and to try to tell. My head up. Oh, I'm so I just... What does this event mean to you, Miss Peggy Mars? Oh, my heart. Happy 20th anniversary. My heart is about loving up on my sisters. Do you know what it feels like to have your sisters in the room? John. What you see in the flesh I'm free from people Free from myself There's The doctor lives next door to the janitor The janitor to the, to the reverend And the lawyer We were together Now we get so high and mighty That you create stress on your society Because you don't like poor black folks either. That's a health problem Get yourself together So I can stop being taken care of geriatric people <laughs> First name's Donnie, last name's Glover. In it to win it for the long haul, baby. Do pick up a copy of my two books, 2015, uh, Unapologetically Black, Autobiographical in Nature. Not a bad read. Second book came out in 2021, I Am Black Wall Street. I go into the history of how those entrepreneurs who made Tulsa the crown jewel of black America, one that was bombed from the air and burned to the ground in 1921, how those entrepreneurs got to Oklahoma. They came from Florida. And there are two heroes in the book, a white man, John Brown, one of my heroes, and a black man named Chief John Horse. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about business. We will be talking with Mr. Wayne Frazier, the president of the Maryland Washington Minority Companies Association. They have an annual event, uh, usually, uh, I believe it's May. And it is just, for me, the greatest black business breakfast. Some people use the term minority, uh, but the greatest black business breakfast in the region out of Martin's West. Now, what is the Maryland Washington Minority Companies Association? Uh, briefly, in 2002, the Maryland Washington Minority Contractors Association originated to advocate for minority and women construction trade contractors because so much work was being completed without the util utilization of said firms. Black people weren't getting any business. As a matter of fact, I can remember seeing this one article had our, our late hero, Bob Clay, he had on a plaid, a full length plaid coat. You remember the plaid coats? And they were protesting in front of City Hall. I imagine Schaefer was the mayor at the time. My point is people like Bob Clay, people like the late Arnold Jolivet, I've got a piece of paper around here with some of his words on it that I tend to read from time to time for motivation. But these people were advocates for black business, early advocates, Ray Haysbert, advocate for black businesses. Today, Maryland Washington Minority Company Associations, Companies Association, tailors their services to clients, whether they're large or small, primes or subs, and their core group of services is all about helping these businesses gain access to the big boys. And some of these companies uh, eventually become big boys themselves. Without further ado, we're going to go to the line 
and I'm sure he's going to correct me on something I said because that's just a teacher in him. Banker, businessman, entrepreneur, Mr. Wayne Frazier. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. Hey, Donnie. Good morning. Now, because of this beautiful virtual background you have, I can't tell if you're in Florida, Maryland, London, or what have you. Where are you? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, my man, 500 grand. Uh, anything about the history that we should know? Well, the most important thing about the history is that I was motivated and stimulated uh, and moved by the two gentlemen you just mentioned, Mr. Bob Clay, Robert Clay, and Mr. Arnold Jolivet, uh, Sr., I uh, met those gentlemen way back, Clay in 1989. Um, and at that point, he was, when I was uh, running Harbor Bank's loan department, we made him the largest loan that the bank had ever made. Actually, it was this legal lending limit. It was $250,000. It's probably four or five million, six million now. But back then, it was only $250,000. And... Clay paid us back as agreed. And we said, well, why don't you keep it so we can earn more money? He said, no, 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 no. I got to pay it back because um, that's the best way to, to run your business. Smooth. When you get the money, pay it back. And then Mr. Jolivet, I met him in 99. Um, and he was the one who inspired me to leave the whole financial banking arena and become a crusader. And how crazy was that? Don I, Quixote. Remember Don <laughs> Quixote with the toothbrush in the windmill? Crusader. So, so I spent the last 24 years of my precious life crusading for the cause of advancing our folk in business. And economics. Um, at times, I would lay awake and say, "Wayne, why are you doing this? You're not making any money. You're going poor." But the passion just stuck with me every time I received a call from one of our constituents saying, "Wayne, I'm not getting paid, but Wayne, they call him my 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 my, my workers monkeys, Wayne." They want to fight us. And the first thing I say, don't touch anyone. Walk away. Walk away. We'll deal with it. And that that bug has stuck with me for the last 24 years. And actually now it's even greater because now I have 24 years of experience of assisting our business people. And it makes it easier to resolve issues. And folks think that I'm sort of a wacko uh, because I take positions that perhaps are against the status quo. I didn't necessarily support our present governor, uh, Mr. Moore, Governor Moore, Wes Moore. Um, I didn't support Sheila Dixon. I didn't support this one and that one. And the reason being is that I thought we could do better with someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's why I enjoy what I do because I don't go along with the status quo. My man, 500 grand, you have to make a choice. You know, there's one radio host that's out here and this cat doesn't like anybody. And my challenge with that is you never pick a side. So right. that's safe. It's easy to throw rocks. But pick a side. Win or lose, pick a side. And stand for what you stand for. I think, I think in the long run, Malcolm X said merit is in the long run recognized and rewarded. In the long run, It'll be recognized and rewarded. I mean, look at your breakfast. Tell me, now, now before we go uh, too far, 
who is the beautiful woman at your side? My lovely bride. I, I, I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> Excuse me. My lovely bride, Patricia Trish Madish Frazier. Um, she, um, when I was in my loneliest time and my lowest time, it was 2007 when I went broke. I had no more money. All the money I'd saved for all of those years that I've been out there working and, 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 and slinging, it was gone. And she says, Wayne, I can help you and make this better. She quit her job, a very good job, at City Mike in New York. And she came on board, became our business manager, and we never, ever looked back. Glory to God. Glory That's my honey. For the, the, the books, the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. I agree. I agree. And to this day, and to this day, we are soaring because of her wise business decisions. People think, Wayne, you, you, you got all this. You got, no, my major consultant is my wife. And I wish a whole bunch of other men could rely on their spouses like that. I rely on her for everything. That's huge. That's huge because you, you know, you, you big man on campus. Well, she oftentimes, probably after the day, she'll criticize me uh, for what I said or what I didn't say, or she'll criticize me for, uh, or critique me, I should say, not criticize, critique me. Um, and it just makes me sharper and better. A lot of times we don't like that type of critique. But Accountability. Accountability partner. That's right. That's what she does. That's what and grown that's people what do. And and and, and 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 let me just go back to our, our governor Westmore. And one thing I'm so proud of him is that he's got a strong queen. And I'm probably sure that she also critiques him to make him better. Um, and that's, that's a, plus you got that beautiful little family too, the boy and the girl, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, although I may have my other views of Governor Moore, the one view that I hold dear is the fact that he has a beautiful queen and a beautiful family. Because you, you are no doubt proud of your children. If I'm not mistaken, one of your children is a veteran. Yes, he's a veteran of the uh, from the Marines and Navy of the Afghanistan uh, conflict, uh, and he is currently uh, he he left as a captain, and he's currently a uh, orthopedic surgeon and a full partner in a practice uh, out in Ellicott City. I'm very proud. My other son is a contractor. Uh, and a hustler uh, of all types of commodities, uh, legal commodities, um, here in Baltimore. I have a daughter who is successful. Uh, she is at the University of Maryland Medical System. And another daughter lives down in Florida. And because of the whole pandemic, she now works um, remotely and has been since 2020 and was able to relocate to Florida uh, to and, and still maintains her employment where I don't know where it is, but she has been working remotely every day and earns a very, very, very good living doing that. So very pleased with my children. Yes. I, I, I've been to your home before. I've talked with you many times. We often are talking about business, but I do know that family is important to you. You oh, can sure. do all of the business in the world, but family is that constant for you. 
Oh, definitely. I have uh, five siblings uh, and um, host of nieces and nephews and cousins. And um, I'm just blessed to have yeah. that much love and joy in my in my life. Now, now, didn't you used to go to Bali? No, 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 no. I went to the blue and gold of Mergenthaler Vocational Technical High School. Oh, class my, my of 1971. Mistake. Mervo. At that time, it was only like 20 black folks at Mervo. Uh, but now um, you would think that black white folks never been there. But uh, great school, Mervo. Taught me a lot. And you love Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Spent 70 years of my life in Baltimore. Um, love it so much that um, um, I just never wanted to leave until recently. <laughs> Tell me about business. Tell me about business advocacy and how it's changed over the past 20 years. Now we have the internet. Now your website, and, and I always commend you on your website, on, on your wife's understanding of the need to con consistently improve the digital presence a lot of companies still struggle in this area this is 2023 and people don't understand the significance still of having a, a website that is so timely i mean one glance at it you'll see the goldman sachs 10,000. you'll see information on bid opportunities You'll see advertisers. I mean, tell me about the past 20 years, how business has transformed. Well, my website was created back in 2004. So we have 20 years of experience. In, However, putting that aside, when I'm coaching um, minority businesses or any business, but principally minority businesses, black owned businesses. The first thing that I ask is, do you have a website? And they said, well, why is that important? I said, well, any major company like a Goldman Sachs, like a BGE, like Constellation, um, like Johns Hopkins University. When they, the first thing that they do is go to a company's website. And if you don't have a website, and especially with a company like BGE, they are concerned that you aren't technically sound and you're not, in essence, and you're not putting your best foot forward and, and providing a brief history of what your company is about, products and services, even with some photos. So it's a negative look if a business doesn't have a website. And a website doesn't have to be as elaborate as ours. It can be a one and two pager with about us, what we do, um, and how to contact us. That's as simple as that. And then you would be checked off the box. Oh, they are technically sound. Now, in our website, I realized not 2004, but it was around 2012 that I can make money while I'm asleep. Meaning, with all of those advertisers, and we have a bunch of corporate, wonderful corporate sponsors, but with all of those advertisers, they pay your rate just to be on your site, to get their message out. And you can be sleep, sleeping, and the money continues to come in. And that's, for us, the most important thing of our survival. And by the way, my wife was the one who brought 
that into uh, fruition. She was the one with the vision of the whole website. Now, it does take maintenance. Just can't put something up there and leave it. It takes sometimes daily maintenance, but at least weekly maintenance to keep it fresh. But websites in this day and age, if you don't have one, you're not serious about business. Do you come across anyone who does not have a cell phone? Everyone has cell phones. Everyone. Everyone. As there, matter was of fact, time, there was a time when that was a struggle. I remember my dad, you know, he's been gone 20 years, but I remember him struggling with the idea of someone having that kind of access to him all the time. I mean, he eventually conformed, but I remember that transition. And, you know, as I'm studying, you know, now at Morgan, finishing up my master's, this it, there's this concept of innovation. As this new technology comes on, the old technology, uh, no one is investing in rotary phones anymore. People are now investing in either, you know, your Android or your iPhone. Let me just ask you, what's your preference, Android or iPhone? Well, for the last, be the beginning of time for me with cell phones have always been Androids. But within the last 18 months or so, I switched over to the iPhone and I will never go back. <laughs> it's so much superior uh with all of the different bells and whistles but and 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 for me the i do a lot of photos because I, I, yesterday i did two events and they were both for my uh, clients and the photos that i take with my iphone are so crystal clear um that it's just a superior way to cover and post those photos and discuss for again for me and to discuss the events that my clients uh, were hosting. So I use it principally for that. Others use it for other things, but I use it principally for that to cover events. So I don't need to have a photographer. I'm my own photographer and I can do either video or I can do still. So it's just a great invention. I mean, these are genius people to come up with these ideas. I got to tell you, as you're talking about innovation, Ray Haysbert comes to mind. And I have one around here somewhere. Do you remember? Do you remember the Palm Pilot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I found one that I had from night from year 2000 on my 50th birthday. Um, so, so so did I. I came across the Palm Pilot, and I remember y'all get a good look at that. This is history in the making. And I remember when my daughter was first born, she did something. She did dot, and this is a little baby. It was dot dot, and all of a sudden I heard a thousand numbers disappear. <laughs> that will never happen again because I got the backup plan, Lord. I'm looking at this little baby. What have you done to my palm pilot? But anyway, Ray Haysbert showed me that now our, our prayers, not only to Ray, but also Reggie. You know, Reggie yes. tragically killed last week in a hit and run car accident. But Ray, Mr. Ray, loved that man. Low hanging fruit. That was his line. Every Anybody that knew Ray Haysbert and sat in one of his uh, classes knew the concept of low hanging fruit, but he showed me how to do a maneuver or two on the then Palm Pilot, like how you could uh, you could send your information to someone's device. You know, you you could zoom it, you could beam it, and I'll never forget that it does. Age has nothing to do with it. He was what, 75, 80, up, up there in age. He was listening to Jay-Z, Big Pimpin'. He was, he was on technology. He was not afraid. And, 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 and it always stuck with me that don't let 
yourself be intimidated by changing technology? I, I guess that's the big point of it. Can you relate? Sure, but 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 Ray was ahead of his time. I mean, you remember, you know, he took over Park Sausages when uh, the founder Parks stepped aside, and um, they took the company public, um, and then. He cut the deal with, uh, I forget, one of the other meat packing companies, uh, national packing companies, um, and was able to bring them to the new facility up there in Park Heights. So Ray was just totally, totally above everyone else as far as uh, uh, intelligence and risk taking. So he was different. But yes, I understand. And But I've embraced the, uh, the whole technology uh, concept uh, years ago because it's just the future and it's the way things are going. And what we're doing now, hell, it'll be apropos. Uh, it will be gone uh, 20 years from now. It'll be something different. So, um, um, but, but one thing has not changed. You can have the website. You can have the beautiful shirts with the logos. You can even have your breakfast. But there is one key ingredient innately in MWMCA. And we find it in some other organizations. It's called guts. You will challenge anyone if they're not doing what they say they're going to do. Anyone. Why is that, Mr. Frazier? Because. And I'm not trying to get you in trouble, Miss Pat. This, this is just a basic bounce pass. But I'm talking about, you know, I think of Arnold, Mr. Jolly. And I love that man. That man. He would always say, Donnie, come on out here and get your check. Those were some of the sweetest words to my ear. But he was a fighter. And, and, and I'm reminded, just like the various Black history books I surround myself with, the fight is never over. As long as you're Black and in America, I don't care if the politician is a Democrat, a Republican, a Republicrat. You've got to fight. Oh, Otherwise, they're gonna take your money. I agree. I agree. Um, but see, that's a passion that I had uh, that probably was kindled when I was an undergrad at Morgan State University between 1971 and 1976. And because um, at that time, they instilled that fighter mentality in me. Um, and then that just carried over with my first career assignment uh, with Equitable Trust Bank, um, where in 1976, it was only a few of us working, Black folks working for Equitable. And you either went along to get along, or when opposition, uh, confronted you, you, you stood up to it. And as a result, that has stayed with me my entire career when I moved to Harbor Bank. Um, hell, money is green, but we couldn't get most of the major wealthy Black folks to bank with us. Now, Ray Haysburg did, Alan Quill did, um, the, the, few the, others. Parking, the parking lot magnet. That's right. Uh, a disciple of Mr. Adams and Mr. Willie Adams did. But many of the others, perhaps educated ones, um, they shied away from us because we weren't a mainstream institution. And so I had to uphold the, 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 the opportunities that Harbor Bank was, was projecting at that point. And so I had to fight to get business there. And then when I left Harbor Bank um, to establish what I'm doing now, it was just natural to 
stand up and confront power because you get no respect if you don't. Now, be right. Be rightful. Be righteous. Don't come with anything weak and then you will prevail. And that's been my motto all throughout my 71 years of life. And that is to fight, fight, and continue to fight. And Donnie, I'm involved in some, some big fights right now that hopefully they'll get resolved and we won't have to broadcast it on your network or any other on my network. But these major companies and state government have done our black businesses wrong, wrong. And there's two of them right now that I'm dealing with, with the Moore administration. Um, talk about leave no one behind. Um, talk about advancing black business. Well, these black businesses have been doing very well under the previous Hogan administration. One of them actually saved Maryland during the pandemic. And now the new Moore's administration, the two white secretaries, they want to do away with them. And that's not right. It's not right at all. And I'm just trying to get the Moore administration to understand you need to correct this. If not, we're going to make this headlines because these businesses are successful. I mean, very successful black businesses that we all, and I'm not going to mention their names because we know, I'm not, not going to throw it out there yet. But the Moore administration, they need to come to terms and understand that we're not playing. Now, since we throw in names, I didn't know you liked the Hogan administration. I didn't find anything wrong with Hogan. No. I mean, no, I mean, Hogan, let's go back. During the O'Malley administration, I believe it was 12 or 13 times I had to appear in front of the Board of Public Works during his eight years there. And for those of us who don't know, that's the most significant meeting in the state every Wednesday in Annapolis. The governor, the treasurer, and the comptroller had this meeting, and they determine who gets a contract and who doesn't. And if the white companies come and they don't have enough minority business participation, preferably 29%, then they are typically shunned. And told to go back, and we that's what we would like to think. They're told to go back and get your 29%. Because a lot of times these white primes, white prime contractors, want to come and get a waiver saying that they couldn't find any qualified minority, i.e., black companies and the others, to get uh, a piece of that 29%. So they're trying to get they're trying to get over, and people like you are saying, "Hey, let's not let these things fly. Make sure these white primes are are meeting the state goal of twenty nine percent." And so, to this governor's credit, Adrian Harper had an event down in Bowie State this week, and you know that's what prompted my call to you. Because, you know, with you being in two different states right now, I had to make sure that you are hearing some of this stuff as it unfolds because you are a voice. I mean, you might be the bad boy, but I tend to be the bad boy sometimes. Good cop, bad cop. The same way they do us when we're driving down North Avenue. Good cop, bad cop. So... This governor seems to be pushing the envelope, but as you mentioned, there are some instances, and it'll be with any governor, some instances where somebody is not feels like they're not being uh, helped like they should be helped. But I, I, I defer to you. Well, um, you mentioned Adrian Harpole. Um, I love the brother. Respect him tremendously. 
and Adrian has endured a long life of uh, ups and downs. And um, he is a very strong supporter of Governor Moore. And um, and Adrian this, said on this show this week, hey, we, we're not just taking you saying that you're going to be the first black governor. We want to know, hey, we don't need another beret. That's essentially what he said on this show. We appreciate the Barack Obama, but we need some blackness, even more blackness. No slight, and, no disrespect. You know, Jackie Robinson, they put Jackie Robinson in the mazes because Jackie wasn't, the thought was, he wasn't going to buck when they start throwing apples and cans and all of that at him, where Satchel Paige might have pulled that 38 out and said, do it again. <laughs> Might be more like Montgomery, Alabama, when that cat threw his head up in the air with the Batman signal. This ain't Tulsa, Oklahoma. We strapped too. But I defer. Well, um, in, in 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 reference to the event that they had, I believe it's one going to be held uh, on the twentieth or so of of of, of at, at Coppin State. Yeah, I want to say um, October 24th at Coppin State. Okay. And so that is a so major says that advertisement over here. We'll we'll get it up on this ticket tape here. <laughs> but that's a major, yeah. major um um difference between the previous administration and um this administration, but it's expected. I mean, we expect Governor Moore to champion our rights and opportunities. We expect that. Um, if not, then, you know, why? It's, well, it's, well, that's the point of Adrian's event there at Bowie State University, the one coming up here at Coppin. Uh, and, and, and none of us, you, him, me, none of us can do it all. There's no way we can do it all. You may have a better rapport with Governor A, he may have a better rapport with Governor B. It doesn't matter as long as somebody's pushing that agenda in their face. Democrat, Republican, black, white, black business. Because we hear Arnold Jolivet in our ear all the time. I know you hear him. Well, by the way, his son, Arnold Jolivet too, is now uh, in charge of all... Uh, minority business for the University of Maryland, Baltimore. And um, he would be great to have on your show because um, University of Maryland, Baltimore covers all of the professional schools downtown off of Green, Green Street, as well as um, they control all of the procurement for Coppin, Towson, University of Baltimore, for um, um, a couple of other universities. So it all comes through the University of Maryland, Baltimore. And I call him Little Arnold, he's huge, he's bigger than his dad. But Little Arnold um, is now carrying that torch and leading leading the way. He would be a great, 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 great uh, uh, person to be on your show. But um, getting back to, to what Adrian is doing for Governor Moore, um, again, it's needed. Um, and the best thing that the governor can do is we call it the Calvin Butler effect. Calvin Butler was a former CEO of, of BGE, and now he is the CEO of Exelon, uh, the second largest public utility in America. But Calvin, as in that CEO role, he did one thing and one thing great. He let all of those vendors know, those first tier vendors know, doing business with BGE, you must achieve their 25% goal. If you don't, then we will reconsider doing business with you when your contract expires. And all contracts expire, at least they should. Um, and so that's what our governor is doing now. He is letting his 
secretaries and directors of agencies know what his expectations are. But my problem is that a couple of them haven't gotten the message. They want to allow white businesses to run over black businesses and get away with it. And that's not what we're going to do. And the fight continues. And it continues. They need to get the message. So many thoughts come to mind. So many fights. One day, there's going to be a new Wayne Frazier, a new Donnie Glover. Do you think we've prepared those who are following us, those who are younger than us, to step into our shoes when our time has come? Have we done enough to groom some new Bob Clays, some new Ray Haysbert, some new Arnold Jolivets, or do, you know, have we gotten soft? Have we become comfortable with integration? Have we gotten, uh, has our civil rights and civil rights advocacy just gotten watered down? I believe they have, and folks have gotten comfortable And, you know, because things are better, easier. Um, But it didn't come without a fight. I I understand. But you have so many black women now uh, heading up businesses, CEOs, on corporate boards. I believe they outnumber black men. Um, and, And we look at that. And we see that, gosh, we don't have to fight as much. Oh, yes, we do. Because because things are just easier to 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 come by. But I guarantee you this: this past June, when the Supreme Court, when they eliminated the affirmative action at the college and university level, that's just the beginning. It's going to move. I would say in the next three years, it's going to move to affirmative action in government contracting. And it's going to be overturned. And if it's overturned, a state like Maryland, who I understand, they fight close to 150 lawsuits annually we don't even know about where you have principally white businessmen suing the state of Maryland because of the MBE program. They don't like it. Oh no, 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 no. They They want it gone. They want it gone. They want it gone. That's the danger of the Republican party. Oh yeah. That's the big danger of the Republican party. And then you have people like Clarence Thomas and his wife, Jenny, um, I mean, I don't know what to say. These they are a mess. Uncle but, Clarence, <laughs> Tom ass. And then you got the presidential, the guy that from Senator from South Carolina running for president. Uh, he, 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 he's, he, he, he buys into all of that. So Scott, Scott, Tim Scott. So, so. In two to three years, you're going to see a couple of these suits that have hit the state, like Maryland. Maryland fights them vigorously and and defeats them each and every time. But they're going to now move it up to the state Supreme Court. And then if they lose there, you know where it's going. It's going to the U.S. Supreme Court. And all you need is one. To hit there and as long as the republicans hold the majority that they have and they surely will unless one of them die uh and biden can appoint someone they're going to rule against affirmative action in public uh procurement and there's against- a major case that's often referred to croson versus the city of richmond yes where this white majority company is doing everything possible to fight 
as you say, being forced to give a part of those contracts to black businesses. Is, do you think this is just, you think it's racism? You think it's greed? You think it's racism and greed? Do you think it's fear of a black planet, as the rapper would say? Why are these white primes so adamant? Not all, but these who fight us and the, the Supreme Court and, and just righteousness and justice. When I think of the black veterans who have fought and bled and died for this country, I think of your son who put his life on the line only to have this person think that they're the only ones who are supposed to benefit. It sickens me to my core. And it, it just, it's no different than what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's, it's, it's not gone anywhere. Well, Donnie, because I'm reminded, this happened during the O'Malley administration when he was mayor in Baltimore. And I protested um, with a company uh, who was blocked out of a lighting contract. And I heard the owner of the lighting company said, they're trying to take my business, my business. And he didn't want to share any of it, any of it at all. And so the light lit but up. They, that they, they, these are contracts from public dollars, our That's tax right. dollars, state That's dollars. Right. So we, we have a say and where that money goes. Yes. But this cat, yes. like the one you're talking about, it's me, 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 like a big baby, a selfish, crying, whining baby. And and on that particular time, O'Malley, he voted with us and he struck it down and sided with the minority company. But the point is, the point is, is that the belief is that this procurement, this work, is theirs and theirs only to keep and i imagine i imagine any business person what a selfish prick well but donnie that's capitalism and that's the way capitalism think you win it it's yours until it's not yours yeah but um, when the wars come down they hiding their sons and sending their sons to canada while your son and my son are being drafted to go to war. So they really have no skin in the game. No, and people like us from Baltimore, we call them cowards. <laughs> well, um, our former president, Trump, he didn't go to Canada, but he had his dad to give him those deferments. I think it was four or five of them. Um, so, yes. Um, I'm getting and... myself upset. I got to calm down, Mr. Fraser. That's why you <laughs> like to... That's why you called me because let me let me ask you this. I, I gotta ask you on behalf of Be More News. What is the role of black media in this fight here in the state of Maryland? What's been your experience? There's the Afro, there's W E A A, there's Be More News, there's the Baltimore Times, there's Kenny Brown's Northwest Voice, there's the Washington former informer with Denise Rollard Bonds. What is the role of black media in keeping this fight alive from your perspective? Well, it should be keeping that light of truth out there to let folks know. However, it's a business, Donnie. And um, in order to, 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 to stay up, and continue uh, that advocacy work, they have to hire folk reporters um, who are able to get the information, report it for them to publish. And most of the media sources that you just mentioned, I, I say except for the Afro, have very few, if any, um, reporters out there um, bringing the information back and and 
they have to rely on advertisers. And if you look at their publications, they don't have many advertisers. And so, um, in my opinion, and I've reached out um, to the Afro, um, and I said, why don't you get yourself certified um, as a minority-owned business? Um, surely you can do it. Um, and then take advantage of the various programs. Um, and I can say that they haven't done it to this day. Um, but Nick, 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 to, to their defense, a lot of people get frustrated with this certification process. You know that, Mr. Frazier. Fundamentally, some of us wonder why we have to prove that we're black. It's not proving that you're black. Black yeah, is, it is because white companies don't have to do it. Yeah, but it's, is that true? It's, do white companies have to prove that they're white? No, no, no. But they can't. They other than white women, they cannot be a part of the program. And how many of these um, companies are fronts for white men? These white women companies. I imagine some are. I some. don't know of any. <laughs> I, I I don't. I mean, and I we certify businesses part of our uh, uh products and services that we offer is a certification matter of fact it's a good portion of our business and um how, how much is the certification it, process what does pardon? how much do you charge to certify a company well it depends upon um the the how type big of the work company that we is. need to do mm -hmm. i mean in some cases we may have to restructure the whole corporate structure uh bylaws uh, minutes, um, and so forth, um, uh, operating agreements and so forth in order to conf conform with what the authorities would be looking for. Um, and, and that may take, and we even have to go back. We may even have to structure the equity contributions that are made or restructure those. Um, so, and, and in some cases, a lot of the white women businesses are declined um, up to 20, 30 counts of the reasons why they were declined. And so we will have to take, and then it may take us a year or two to turn it all around and get them into a position where they are large and in charge and running the business. Now, in each case, they were all running the business. It's just the way they submitted their their paperwork. And it's the, the devil is in the details. But but every white woman-owned business that we've assisted, that woman was large and in charge and running the business, but they failed to, they thought that they could just do the paperwork, submit it, and bam, because they thought, oh, I'm a woman, I can be certified. Same thing with a black person. Oh, I'm a black person, I can be certified. No, no, no. It's how you structure it. It's who you have as investors. It's 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 a number of things and so um um so it's it's critical that it's done properly because if you turn it down you have to wait at least six months and then sometimes a year in order to reapply tell me about chris lundy baltimore city's mbe chief under mayor brandon scott well when courtney billups was in that role i thought he was the best when Kamada Brown was in that role, I thought she was the best ever. And now that we have Chris Lundy, I believe he's the best ever. So much so that the mayor has re realigned or re uh, categorized, re restructured, restructured, restructured the whole MBE department um the whole uh, uh other agencies to to report up through chris lundy um chris lundy um is is the second tomorrow was the first to find a major prime for not meeting their mbe spending goals chris um has done that as well and actually disbarred he disbarred a company out of New Jersey. We call him up from uh, Tony Soprano's area. 
up there in New Jersey. They were doing uh, DPW work, uh, underground utility, dirty, grungy work, but it's a lot of money in that field. And he disbarred them for not paying minority, black, not minority, but black contractors here in the city. So, and then he's, he's revised their whole MBE program for certifications. You can get certifications done in less than 30 days now. He's convinced the mayor to bring in more professional, skilled people in his department to turn these investigations around quickly. So all I can say is I was just with him yesterday. Chris Lundy is a blessing. Never before has a prime been sued in the city of Baltimore, at least not that that I've heard of. Is is this unprecedented? Yes. Yes. Um, the previous mayors, these issues have been going on and folks like Arnold and Bob Clay and others have brought it to those mayor's attentions that these primes were mistreating um, as well as myself. And the mayors from Jack Young to Pew to Sheila Dixon, um, Stephanie Rawlins, they wouldn't take action like this. And I surmise the reason they don't want to take action like this is because they rely on campaign contributions from major companies like that. And they and they, they, the, the evidence was there, but they would not act on it. Um, but could, could, could we say that BG&E has uh, skated with regard to some of their obligations to the city of Baltimore? Could one say that they have gotten a sweetheart deal? No, 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 no. The devil is in the details. Folks don't understand the entire, and you. we should have one of the BGE folks on your show. We'd, to love, we'd love to have them. I think we can arrange that. But uh, they're getting a, 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 a bad look at this because of the negative reporting being done by others on how BGE is, is is allegedly taking advantage of the rate payers in the city of Baltimore. But that's not so. I don't have all of the details, but it would be great to arrange an opportunity to bring one of their uh, spokesperson on to explain it. But no, BGE, trust me, what I've seen with BGE, and especially with their workforce development programs, I mean, they're training black folks. They're going to Carver and Mervo and training students there to come out of high school to enter in employment with BGE. As so, they should, because when we see a black man at the top, we expect results for black people, whether it's Calvin Butler, whether it's Wes Moore, whether it's Michael Steele, Boyd Rutherford, Jack Young. When we see a black person at the top, I have the expectation and be more news and black USA that that means some benefits for black people. Right. Oh, truly BGE, in my opinion, in greater Baltimore, other than Whiting Turner contracting now is the most inclusive major corporation in the greater Baltimore region. BGE. Wow. Wow. Right here on BlackUSA.news, the Donnie Glover Show. You've heard it, folks. Any final thoughts, Mr. Frazier? Donnie, I appreciate you and all that you do for us to bring light to the various issues that are going on. And you are not afraid. You are not afraid at all to take those positions with, with the hope that it will improve things. And I, I admire you for that, Donnie. I always have and I always will. And I just want the best for you. Good morning, world.